In the early 70s, Hot Rod magazine scored an exclusive tech story straight from Chevrolet's product planners. They revealed a Vega fitted with a 454 cubic inch big block engine. This unassuming Chevrolet Vega, transformed by the geniuses at motion performance, became a street racing legend. But how did they manage to transform it? Let's find out. In this video, we will reveal how the Chevrolet Vega became the motion super Vega, the stuff of street racing legends. So let's get started. It's the early 1970s. The muscle car era is at its peak, but dark clouds are gathering on the horizon. The 1973 oil crisis is about to hit and stringent emissions regulations are looming. The days of big displacement gas guzzling monsters seem numbered. Amidst all this chaos, the Chevrolet Vega, a small, lightweight economy car, was designed to compete with fuel-efficient imports. On paper, it was everything the muscle car wasn't. Compact, economical, and let's face it, a bit boring. But where some saw limitations, others saw potential. One of those visionaries was Joel Rosen, the mastermind behind motion performance. Located on Long Island, Motion Performance had already made a name for itself by creating some of the most outrageous dealer-built performance cars of the era. Their job was to take stock of Chevrolets and transform them into street-legal monsters. Rosen had a wild idea. What if you took the lightweight, nimble chassis of the Vega and stuffed it full of good old American V8 muscle? The result was the Motion Vega, a car that looked like it belonged in the slow lane but performed like it was born on the drag strip. It all started with the engine. While the stock Vega came with a wheezing four-cylinder that struggled to produce 90 horsepower, Motion Performance had something else in mind. They began by offering 350 small block V8 conversions, which already more than tripled the Vega's power output. But Rosen, ever the madman, didn't stop there. They crammed a big block Chevy V8 into the Vega. It's the legendary 454 cubic inch 7.4 liter monster that powered some of the most potent muscle cars of the era. The result was the Motion Super Vega, also known as the Phase 3 Vega. This little car now packed a punch that could knock out heavyweights. We're talking about 450 horsepower in a car that weighed just over 3,000 pounds. To put that in perspective, it had a better power-to-weight ratio than a Ferrari Daytona. For those customers who wanted the ultimate sleeper, Motion customized their cars, offering the pièce de résistance, the 454 big block V8. Yes, the same engine you'd find in a Corvette or a Chevelle SS, now crammed into a car that was never meant to handle such power. It required extensive modifications and custom fabrication, which was nothing for Motion performance. To install the beast in the car, the firewall had to be cut and modified to accommodate the larger engine. Custom motor mounts were fabricated to secure the behemoth in place. The transmission tunnel needed to be widened to fit the beefier transmission required to handle the engine's torque. Even the hood had to be modified, with a distinctive bulge added to clear the massive air cleaner. But the modifications didn't stop at the engine bay. The stock Vega suspension was never designed to handle the power and weight of a big block V8. Motion Performance completely overhauled the suspension system, adding heavy-duty springs, adjustable shocks, and beefed-up control arms. The rear axle was swapped out for a sturdier 12-bolt unit, often fitted with a limited slip differential and lower gears for blistering acceleration. The brakes, too, needed a serious upgrade. The stock Vega brakes were barely adequate for the four-cylinder engine, let alone a fire-breathing V8. Motion installed larger disc brakes up front and upgraded the rear drums to ensure the car could stop as well as it could go. However, the main hero in the car was the induction system. Perched atop the engine was a giant Holley 850 CFM double pumper carburetor, feeding fuel and air into the hungry V8. It was the street legal engine that churned out a tire shredding 450 horsepower and 500 pound foot of torque. To handle all this power, Motion beefed up the drivetrain significantly. Most Super Vegas came equipped with a Muncie M22 Rock Crusher four-speed manual transmission, famous for its durability and high power applications. The rear end was upgraded to a 12-bolt unit with 4.88 gears, perfect for launching the little Vega like a rocket. But here's where it gets really interesting. Despite all these modifications, from the outside, the Motion Vega looked almost stock, sure. There were some telltale signs if you knew what to look for. The hood bulge, the wider tires, maybe some subtle motion performance badging. But to the untrained eye, it was just another Vega. However, with its anemic four-cylinder, 
the stock Vega would wheeze its way to 60 miles per hour in around 14 seconds. And with the Motion Vega with the 454 big block, it could hit 60 in under 6 seconds. Remember, this was in the early 1970s when a sub 6 second Aero 60 time was the realm of exotic supercars. But straight line speed was just part of the equation. Thanks to its lightweight chassis and upgraded suspension, the Motion Vega could handle too. Creating this pocket rocket wasn't without its challenges. Fitting a big block V8 into a car designed for a four-cylinder created some interesting engineering hurdles. Weight distribution was a major concern. With so much weight over the front wheels, the car had a tendency to understeer. Motion performance countered this by moving the engine as far back in the chassis as possible and adjusting the suspension geometry. Heat management was another issue. Motion had to get creative with cooling solutions, including high-capacity radiators and additional oil coolers. Some cars even sported hood vents to help expel hot air from the engine bay. Then there was the issue of traction. With so much power going to the rear wheels of a lightweight car, wheel spin was a constant concern. Motion addressed this with wider rear tires and traction bars, but even then, driving a Motion Vega required a delicate touch on the throttle. Despite these challenges, or perhaps because of them, the Motion Vega quickly gained a reputation as a giant killer. Stories began to circulate of Vegas showing up at local drag strips and embarrassing big block Camaros and Mustangs. The genius of Joel Rosen and his team at Motion Performance was in recognizing the potential of the Vega platform. They saw beyond its economy car routes and envisioned what it could become with the right modifications. This vision extended beyond just the Vega. Motion Performance applied similar principles to other Chevrolet models, creating a lineup of high-performance vehicles that pushed the boundaries of what was possible. While the 454 Big Block was the headline grabber, it wasn't the only option. Motion offered a range of power plants to suit different needs and budgets. The entry level was the 350 Small Block, which was no slouch itself, offering a significant performance boost over the stock Vega without the complexity of the Big Block swap. Motion offered a 427 cubic inch option for those who wanted even more power. This engine, famous for its use in the Corvette, gave the Vega performance that was truly in supercar territory. There were even rumors of supercharged and turbocharged versions, though these were likely special one-off builds for particularly enthusiastic and wealthy customers. Even Motion had another trick up its sleeve, which was the infamous H-Bomb kit. The H-Bomb kit included the 454 big block engine, transmission, rear end, suspension upgrades, and all the necessary bits and pieces to make it work. Motion Performance also had a unique arrangement with Baldwin Chevrolet, a dealership in Baldwin, New York. This partnership allowed customers to order a new Chevrolet vehicle, have it modified by Motion Performance, and drive it off the lot as a turnkey high-performance machine. This arrangement was a loophole in GM's official policy, which frowned upon dealerships offering such radical modifications. By working through Baldwin Chevrolet, Motion Performance could offer these incredible vehicles with a full warranty. It was a win-win for performance enthusiasts who wanted the reliability of a dealer-backed vehicle with the performance of a custom build. The Motion Vega, along with other Motion Performance vehicles, quickly gained a cult following. Magazines of the era raved about their performance with one famously dubbing the 454 powered Vega King Kong. They also helped popularize the concept of the Sleeper, a car that looks unassuming but packs a serious punch under the hood. Super Vega and its H-Bomb kit inspired a whole generation of gearheads to think outside the box. But as with many great stories in automotive history, the tale of the Motion Vega has a bittersweet ending. The same factors that made it so unique, its compact size, lightweight chassis and massive engine also made it a target for regulators. As emissions and safety standards tightened in the mid-1970s, building and selling cars like the Motion Vega became increasingly difficult. Moreover, the 1973 oil crisis hit the performance car market hard. Suddenly, the idea of stuffing a gas-guzzling V8 into a compact car seemed less appealing to many buyers. The Motion Vega, like many high-performance cars of its era, was a victim of changing times but the legacy of the Motion Vega lived on. It inspired a generation of hot rodders and tuners who saw the potential in small, lightweight cars. The idea of the Pocket Rocket, a small car with a disproportionately powerful engine, can trace its lineage back to creations like the Motion Vega. What are your thoughts on the Motion Vega? Would you have dared to drive one of these beasts? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe to the channel.